What's up, humanities? Okay, Mr. Chaluki back here for the third and final Ask Me Anything responses post. Uh, today, I got quite a bit to throw at you. Usually, I'm, I think in the first two, I hit five. Today, I'm hitting six. And I believe this is pretty much everybody that submitted a question to me. Now, I, I've gotten to you. So thanks to everybody that participated. Uh, I'll be just a heads up for you. I will be adding in some extra credit and I have like paper notes of it all. <clears throat> I probably won't be doing that until the exam window closes, and then I'll see where the extra credit points would benefit you the most. So uh, you can definitely ask me and send me a reminder or something like that, but hold off until like next Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday would be an ideal time to say, hey, did you get my extra credit points? And uh, then I would get back with you and say, yes, I did. And I applied to you a few points and I could probably hopefully tell you exactly where I put them, but I do have the list and I will give everybody a little boost that participated in any of the extra credit assignments. So here we go. First question today <clears throat> from Lucas Shadden, who is a senior that graduated, uh, but I still wanted to hit his question. Probably should have done it before the, the seniors were out of here, but oh well, better late than never, I guess. He asked, what do you think about like the ongoing issue of masks and like shutdowns and all the restrictions? Like basically asking my opinion, do I think uh, we should still be wearing masks or should we kind of let off and start opening up? My opinion, I feel like COVID uh, can still be a threat to certain people, especially if you're not vaccinated in a high risk category. Uh, but most people at this point that are high risk have been vaccinated uh, if they want to. Uh, and I don't feel like it's nearly as deadly as it was like a year ago for a variety of reasons. One, a lot of the people that were the most vulnerable have got it and either got through it or passed away. Um, also, we've gotten much better at treating it. We're not putting people on ventilators anymore. We have more therapeutics that can help people. And of course, the biggest thing is the vaccines are out and most of the people that are at risk have been vaccinated. So I would be, you know, this is a debated thing that you're still seeing get hashed out like in the news and with the politicians. I would be firmly at this point in the camp of, yeah, I think we're ready to get out of the mass and, and just kind of get back to normal. Uh, I think in my opinion, uh, we're a little bit overdue for that and we need to start returning to more normalcy and, and, and start winding down the crisis. So that's my two cents there. Next one, uh, Ryan Smith asked me, and this is one of the most creative and <laughs> this is the one that made me chuckle probably more than about any question I got. He asked me uh, in regards to conspiracy theories, which we had done a unit on that back in semester one. What do I think about the whole uh, conspiracy theory that uh, Zuckerberg, the Facebook guy, guy is a lizard man. Hmm. I don't think he is. <laughs> he seems like a human. He, he seems pretty homo sapien to me. Uh, but no, no, he does have some weird blinking thing going on. And I've seen him take drinks of water where it's, I don't know, kind of weird. And the, the whole eye blinking thing, I, I've seen people point that out. And I have heard of that a little bit before. Uh, <laughs> My, uh, my fun take is, yeah, he's probably a lizard guy and he's trying to take over the world. My serious take is, I think he's just a person that blinks funny. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Ryan. That was an interesting one. Next one. This is a really good question from Ariana Stringham. Uh, she asked what I think about like derogatory slurs, like nasty words that get thrown out there uh, and that some of them are like verboten. That's the German word for forbidden. Uh, what, what do I think about just in, in general, derogatory slurs today? Uh, I don't know. My, I think that's a very complex question. Uh, definitely through all of human history, you've had slurs. Uh, you can see it through American history and in other countries where, and they do kind of change over time, the vernacular or the common speak, you know, uh, of the population changes. So those terms do change over time. Um, for example, like if you go back 100 years ago, 80 years ago, the term retard was a like meta, a legit medical term that describes somebody. Uh, and I forget what the classifications were, but somebody with, you know, uh, a learning disability that was a below average intelligence. Obviously, that term today is kind of a forbidden one. That's a nasty, mean word to say. Uh, and it has evolved over time from a medical term to just being a mean word where you're, you know, being nasty to somebody. Uh, I think in general, my advice is be kind. Don't be throwing slurs out at people and be nasty to other people. You should be respectful and kind to, to other humans uh, and hopefully building up good karma and that'll get reflected back to you. So in general, I'm opposed to that. And I don't think uh, in most circumstances, humans should be using 
derogatory slur terms. Now, in reality, hey, people, you know, in a free country, people are where you have freedom of speech. A lot of people are going to use that freedom in not the best ways and kind of ignorant ways. And people uh, have a tendency to get nasty and mean. And I think social media has been a catalyst for that because a lot of times people will type something and say something super nasty and mean uh, to somebody else in a text type uh, post or response that they would never say to that person if they were sitting there at a table face to face. Uh, So I think that's thrown a wrench in things and, and made it derogatory slurs way more common, unfortunately. Uh, Then I think there's another category of words that are, again, kind of the verboten or forbidden ones. Uh, Some examples I'll give for you, like the N-word, and I won't even say it because that's definitely a forbidden word. That's a weird one because you hear it all the time in rap songs where, you know, if you're an African-American person, it's pretty acceptable and kind of common, uh, not in all groups uh, uh, of black people because they're different, just like white people or Asians or any other group. Uh, But it's kind of common and accepted within that certain community. But like, man, you better not say it if you're not in that group or in that tribe. Uh, Another couple that would tie into kind of my U.S. history class. I hear all the time in the news today, people, uh, politicians and pundits that are on the news calling their opponents Nazis or communists fascist. You're like Stalin or Hitler. Uh, now, those aren't necessarily like forbidden words, but I think they're they're really potent terms. Or another one that gets thrown a lot, around a lot today uh, would be like racist or a bigot. Uh, being a racist, being a bigot, a Nazi, a, a Soviet-style Stalinist communist, those those are really nasty words to throw around, whether you understand it, what exactly they mean or not. Um, and I think there's serious claims. And I feel like we have overused those so much. And there's so much negativity and going back and forth where you're demonizing the other side that we're actually devaluing those words. Like, uh, Recently, more, for example, in American politics, a lot of people called Trump a fascist or a Nazi. Prior to that, Obama was in office and tons of people called Some would call him a Nazi, too. But more often you'd hear it said that he is like communist or he's like Stalin or Mao, uh, which Hitler, Stalin and Mao, hands down. Those are like the guys from history that are like responsible for the most deaths. And uh, they're horrible kind of bad dictators. Right. Uh, And if you know anything about history, I don't care what side of politics you're on uh, today, if you like Obama or hate him or like Trump or hate him. But let me tell you this. I do know quite a bit about history and Obama and Trump. uh, I like them and dislike both of those guys for various reasons. uh, But neither one of them is anywhere close to Hitler, Stalin or Mao, at least in my opinion. And if you know, knew more about history, you, you would. Uh, or maybe some of you do, you'd know that, man, I don't think we should be throwing those terms around so cavalierly. Uh, The same with like racism, where I feel like, uh, you know, do racists exist? Are there are there examples of racism? Yes. And you can go find those and uh, it shouldn't be accepted. That term should mean something. But when racism, when you get called a racist or a bigot for basically just disagreeing with somebody about a policy issue that Maybe it doesn't even have much to do with race. Uh, I think we devalue those terms. Um, And I would say, like, on the other hand, I don't think you should be using those terms or just throwing them around freely. But I will say um, that, you know, those terms should mean something and they should be reserved for when they really need to be used. And uh, I'm a free speech, pretty much absolutist. Uh, I don't think you should be able to tell somebody you're going to kill them and I'm going to threaten you and put their name on the internet and try to get people to go actually do harm. I I would kind of draw a line there where you're actually causing harm or like trying to incite a rebellion or revolution or something like that. Uh, But in general, for most things, I think even if people are saying ignorant stuff, we sh- I do believe in freedom of speech. And I think anybody should be able to pretty much say any words that they want. Uh, and I've long felt that the cure to bad speech, people saying dumb, ignorant, hateful things is more people using their freedom of speech 
to say good things and to uh, shout those people down and call them out. And the, you know, the cure to bad speech is more good speech, essentially, is how I would sum it up. Uh, now, some people would disagree with me on that today, but that's kind of my two cents on derogatory slurs and, you know, all the nasty, get nasty venom that's getting thrown out to both sides. Next one, Madison Winchuk, uh, another senior that is out of here. And I wish I would have got to this one a little bit sooner, too. Uh, she had a really good question, which I kind of meant to do a uh, unit on pollution, global warming, that kind of stuff. And I just never got to it this year. I think I'll add that to the class coming up. But she asked specifically, what do I think about like pollution in general and rivers and waterways getting polluted and junk dumped in them? She brought up the Ganges River that runs through India in the Amazon. Uh, it's in Brazil. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's a huge problem. Uh, now, I'll give kind of nuanced advice here or, or my nuanced take. Global warming, okay? Controversial issue that gets thrown out in the news all the time. And you hear people talking, and a lot of people uh, would say that's like the number one issue facing the planet today. I think, and this is a Chaluki opinion, okay? I'm not a scientist or a climatologist or anything like that. I'm a history teacher, you know, social studies teacher in Jackson, Michigan. Uh, so take my opinion with the grain of salt. I feel like man is impacting global warming and that there's no doubt it's indisputable that the global temperature over the last generation or two has been going up and that carbon has been going up. I'm not 100% convinced that man is the only cause of it because climate has you know, gone up and down in temperatures for a variety of reasons for the whole planet's history. Uh, now, a lot of people say, oh, you're like a climate change denier or you're, you know, that's not necessarily the case. I do think carbon emissions are one part of the pie and they're impacting global temperatures and we should clean up our act more. Um, I also will say though, so I think man is in part or maybe all, but at least in part causing like the warming of the planet and climate change. I'd also say, I don't think it's as big a threat as it often gets portrayed in the media. I think the, the planet's temperature going up like two degrees Celsius over a hundred years it's going to make some problems. It's mostly, though, going to affect from what I've studied about it. It's going to affect the, like, the poorest countries that are on coastlines the more most. So if you live in Bangladesh over by India, super poor country, and it's right on the, the coastline, uh, those it'll probably be very disruptive there. And it's going to make people move out of some of the big coastal cities. And, and it's going to be a problem for them in the decades ahead if sea levels do come up and rise somewhat. And if it's already hot there, if it gets even hotter, that's not ideal. Uh, but I think for most people, for us living in Michigan, we're 800 feet above sea level. Uh, Michigan you, had been a pretty cold place. Like when I was growing up, we had a lot of snow days and ice. Uh, the temperature coming up a little bit in places like most of the United States or in Canada or in Russia or Europe, uh, actually, there might be some benefits to that. And I know that's kind of almost a forbidden thing to say, but it'll allow us to grow more crops. It's going to expand like agricultural uh, areas where we can, you know, put more more crops and stuff into production. Uh, it's going to make the temperature for most of the population that lives up in the in the northern or far southern hemispheres. Um, it'll make it a little more moderate and, and possibly a little nicer. So I think it's a mixed bag and I won't pretend to have all the answers, but I feel like, uh, you know, it, it's a problem. It's something we're facing. Man is impacting it. But I also feel like I don't think it's going to be as big a disaster as it often gets spun. Now, separate issue. And I think this one, uh, basically more Madison's question, this one, I feel like should be an issue that rallies everybody together. I feel like this could be a unifying issue that I don't care if you're team red Republican or team blue Democrat or where you're at in the world, everybody should get together behind this. Pollution, no doubt, is a problem. Conservatives and liberals would say that. Uh, I'm kind of a libertarian. I'm liberal on some issues, conservative on others. I definitely think pollution in general is a problem. Now, America, we have room for improvement, but we're already we've made huge improvements already. We do recycle. We do care about emissions. Uh, a lot of the pollution is actually happening in the developing world, in India, in China, in Southeast Asia, uh, in Nigeria. 
those countries pollute more and it's because they're behind us technologically. So we should try to help them up and help them improve their standards. And uh, I think make everybody around the world aware of like junk getting thrown into the ocean. There is a garbage patch out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean of floating plastic that is about the size of the state of Texas. That ain't good for anybody. Uh, ocean acidity from chemicals getting dumped in it is going up and it's killing fish and coral reefs. Uh, that's a problem. I definitely believe, and it probably on some of these issues, I guess most people would say I'm more of a conservative take, but but also like as as being more conservative on the environment, I don't think that means that I want to be reckless or anything like that. I'm a hunter and I love being outdoors and going kayaking and you know all that stuff. I want to enjoy nature's beauty. Uh, so I'm a hundred percent behind getting pollution levels down and keeping the environment like pristine and doing things like that. Uh, I want the, our natural world to be beautiful and preserved for my kids and my kids' kids and so on, and all these future generations. So pollution, that's Taluki's two cents. That should be a unifying issue. I, well, no matter what you think about maybe global warming or how, if that'll be a disaster or not, everybody can get behind. Let's just not throw junk out all over the place and let's try to keep the environment and the earth looking good uh, and, and save it for future generations. And because it's the right thing to do, uh, you know, that's our home for better or worse. And we're probably nowhere near colonizing other planets. So we better take care of it. Uh, so and I do think uh, the optimist in me, that's a big problem and uh, it needs to be addressed and we need to step it up as as a you know, species, essentially. Uh, but I also think we're making a ton of progress there. And even though it seems to happen really slow, uh, I'm pretty confident that enough people are on board with this and we have enough breakthroughs in technology uh, that I don't think the the Earth's going to end and we're going to pollute it and, and totally ruin it, uh, you know. And uh, I don't think humanity will be dying out, uh, you know, a couple generations from now. Uh, I think we will fix that problem. I'm going to be optimistic on it. Next one, uh, Cassandra asked me, what is a fun fact that I have that I'd like to share? Okay, well, today I just happened to wear my, oh, let me get up here, save the bonobo shirt, all right? If you don't know what a bonobo is and have never heard of one, <clears throat> that's fine, all right? Uh, most people haven't, but basically, our, for, genetically speaking, mankind or womankind too. I, mean, I didn't mean to be like gender specific there, but people, uh, human beings in general, our closest relative in the animal kingdom is chimpanzees. Almost everybody's heard of a chimpanzee. Most people haven't heard of a bonobo. A bonobo looks almost exactly like a, a chimpanzee, but they're a little bit smaller. Uh, they actually, when they first discovered them, or European explorers first discovered them, they called them pygmy chimps because they were just smaller chimpanzees. But the more we uh, started studying them, the more we realized that actually they're not just smaller chimps, they're a different species and they're kind of unique. Um, and check this out. Chimpanzees are have a male dominated like patriarchy and they live in troops. Uh, they're social apes, just like bonobos are essentially as being social apes. Um, but chimpanzees, are the men, the male chimps run those troops. And they're often, if you never looked into this, chimps can be horrifically violent with each other. They will have like little like almost gang wars where two troops will come into each other or they'll eject one chimp out of the troop. Uh, they'll kind of like share the females, okay? And they don't know who the fathers are, so they protect their young together because anybody could be the father, kind of genetically speaking. Uh, but they can be very aggressive and violent and mean to each other. And they will have little wars and kill each other off fighting over turf. Now, bonobos that look exactly the same, just a little bit smaller. Key difference with them is the females are dominant. It's a it's a matriarchy society. So the, the female bonobos actually run the troops. Uh, in contrast now to chimpanzees, and remember, they look the same. They're like 99.9% .9 genetically identical. Uh, but they're so different in terms of behavior. Uh, I guess in the, the bonobo matriarchy, uh, there is no violence. They never fight each other. There's no aggression. Bonobo troops don't go clash with, with each other. And there's almost never like any recorded violence within the troops either. Uh, so I thought that was a really interesting fact when I heard it for the first time. And uh, 
you know, I've heard it said before that the world would be a better place if women ran the the world and, and all that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball to know if it would be or not. But I think by looking at our closest cousin in the animal kingdom, if I had to choose between being a chimpanzee and a bonobo, I think I would definitely pick the bonobos because they seem like they are just very calm, peaceful, uh, super friendly little animals. And, uh, you know, the, the other big differences there is like sexual frustration in chimpanzees where they fight over females and stuff like that but in the bonobo hierarchy the females run that and decide essentially which of the males they would have sex with and uh they, apparently they used to have them at some zoos like if you go to the detroit zoo they do have a chimp exhibit which i feel bad for them there because that's not how chimps are supposed to live and they have to be very frustrated living in that little island reserve that they have uh they used to actually have some bonobos at museum or at uh, zoos too but they ended up getting rid of them all because the bonobos would just lay around and have sex all day interesting huh uh just i i don't know the wonders of the animal kingdom uh but maybe we can learn a little something from our closest cousins there and who knows maybe that's something we should try because most societies in earth have been you know or civilizations and countries uh have traditionally been male dominated although you can find exceptions to that where the men are the ones that are you know the generals and the presidents or emperors or kings and stuff like that uh but who knows maybe if we had women take a more increased role in making some of those decisions maybe it would be better for all of us men included and we'd live in a more peaceful society where everybody's chilled out more i don't know i'm not saying that definitely would be the case because humans are different we're a separate species but I thought that was really interesting and a fun little fact, so much so that I bought a t-shirt with the bonobo on it. Hmm. All right, so there's my fun fact for the day. And last one, and this one I don't have a great answer to, and honestly, of all the questions I got from my U.S. history class and humanities, this one is the deepest question uh, that, man, it, you need to be a philosopher king to sit and try to debate the answer to this because it is infinitely complex and there is good arguments on both sides. So Brianna White, Brie asked me, it never, she never disappoints. She, Brie, you give great responses to everything you did in U.S. history and humanities. I commend you for that. Um, and a very deep thinker. So Brie asked, do humans have free will? Or is everything kind of predetermined when you stop and think about it? Like, did you make, do you, are you going to make the decision to go to college or was that decision really kind of made for you? Was it, to, were you told by your parents and teachers and the people that care about you all the way through growing up that you're going to college, you're going to do this and that's your path. Uh, now college is just one example. You could do it for, you know, Hey, both of my parents were teachers. I ended up becoming a teacher too. Did I just choose that on my own or was that kind of like programmed into me from a young age? Um, man, I don't have an answer for that, but I have heard a lot of people debate back and forth. Humans, we want to believe we have free will and our decisions mean something. Uh, but I'll say if you've never looked into this and heard some really intelligent people talk about it, one that if you're interested in this, I would highly recommend you go look into Sam Harris. He is an atheist, uh, but he's a philosopher and a very profound thinker. Whether you believe in God or not, I think either side would say Sam Harris is highly intelligent. And I do disagree with him on some things, but I like listening to him. I listen to religious people and atheists and agnostics. I try to get a balanced perspective uh, in all things and stay open minded. Anyway, Sam Harris, who uh, is kind of interested in me for quite a while. Uh, definitely, he's a philosopher type dude and a very profound, deep thinker. He argues that we really don't have free will, that when you really boil it down and look at things and analyze you know, your path in life or anybody's, uh, that most of the things that happen in our life are kind of predetermined and programmed into us. And it's almost like destiny. Now, I don't know. I have a hard time believing that because I want to believe that I have control of some things in my life and I, you know, and my decisions mean something. Uh, honestly, on that one, I'm kind of agnostic again. I really am not totally convinced on either side that we totally have free will or that we totally lack free will and everything is kind of predetermined in destiny. And honestly, if I had to give you my best answer for it, what I you know, really think at this point, I would say it's probably a blend of both. And for some people, it might be more destiny. Other people might be, you know, outliers that, you know, make some radical, crazy decisions and think outside the box. But I think for most of us, it's kind of a combination of free will and destiny uh, that, that determines our path forward. Okay, that's the end of it. 
Uh, this will be kind of one of my last videos. I might release a few more like uh, just life advice ones that'll be pretty short and sweet, but I hope you enjoyed these Ask Me Anythings. Thank you to everybody that participated in them. Again, I'll put an extra credit on Wednesday. And last thing, I did put up the last Q&A today. Uh, it's optional. You don't have to do it, but for for those of you that don't have like an A plus, okay? I would highly recommend you go answer that one because for one, I'm gonna grade it pretty easy. For two, it can't possibly hurt you. It'll just benefit you. Uh, and it's gonna be, you just have to respond to any of my ask me anything comments. Uh, for any one person's question, you can tell me, do you think Taluki's opinion was right on? Do you think I was off? If I was right on, why do you agree with me? If you think I'm incorrect, uh, you know, wh what do you di specifically disagree with me on? Why am I wrong? Uh, I would like to see answers on both sides of that. I, and I definitely won't look down on your be angry at all if you disagree with me. I actually kind of like that and like to see that you're thinking critically. So get on there after you viewed some of these videos and check it out and, uh, Give me a last comment on that Q&A and it'll just boost you up and hopefully give you a few percent, especially any of you that uh, have missed one or more Q&A, which there's a lot of people in that group. This would, I don't take those late, but this would make up for one that you missed and probably like practically give you about a three or 4% boost in your grade because it is a weighted category. So I encourage you to go uh, take advantage of that. And with that, I'll sign off. Good luck on the exam. Love you guys. Have a great summer. Have a great life. Don't be strangers.